One food that I've wanted to make for many, many years is onion rings. And I mean the delicious onion rings that you find like in restaurants. And I never got around to researching it. And then lo and behold, this past week, I found in a restaurant trade journal, those are magazines that just go out to restaurants. You don't see those magazines on the rack in the grocery store. I found a restaurant recipe for onion rings. And one of the ingredients is buttermilk. <laughs> so it's gotta be good, right? So that's what I wanna do tomorrow, actually, is I wanna make onion rings. And I say tomorrow because one of the instructions is to slice the onions and then refrigerate them for a minimum of two hours, preferably overnight. So this is the evening before I'm gonna slice my onions, put them away. Tomorrow we're gonna make restaurant onion rings. So let's get started. What I have here are two medium large-ish onions. I've seen larger yellow onions. These are about nine ounces each, roughly 250 grams. I'm gonna slice these up. I don't think the size matters all that much. Basically what you need is a big bowl of onion rings. So I need to clean these up, peel them, and then start slicing them. My onions are peeled. You wanna leave the root section on. You can trim the top part off. That'll hold everything together. And I wanna cut these. That's a train going by. It's been a long time since one of those appeared in my videos. I do live near the tracks, folks. This is a trailer park. Okay, I wanna slice these maybe a quarter of an inch, three eighths, about a centimeter thick. I don't want them too thick, but I don't want them too thin either because I wanna taste the onion when they're cooked. So there are my onion rings. I put them in a bowl, cover these with plastic wrap. In my case, I've got a silicone bowl cover. I'll put this in the refrigerator overnight. Tomorrow we'll make onion rings. So here we are now, day two. I just took my onion rings out of the refrigerator. The next thing I need to do is to prepare the coating. I'm gonna make an egg wash. That's where the buttermilk comes in. And then I'm gonna make a flour mixture to coat them with. In the meantime, I've got peanut oil heating on the stove. So now what I have here is one large egg. And then this is one cup, which is about 240 milliliters of buttermilk. And this is gonna make more liquid than I need, but that's typical of restaurant recipes because they make large quantities to serve a lot of people. I'm using a large measuring cup because I'm gonna experiment. Rather than using a fork or a whisk, I'm gonna try mixing it with the immersion blender. Because you can never get the egg broken up enough with a fork. All right, so there's my egg wash. For my dry ingredients, I have one cup, which is five ounces or about 140 grams of all-purpose flour. I have one half cup, 75 grams of cornmeal. That's yellow cornmeal. This is one third cup or 50 grams of cornstarch. And then finally, half a teaspoon of salt and then I can just mix up with a whisk. And that is good enough right there. I transferred my egg wash to a shallow bowl so that it'll be easier to work with rather than that measuring cup. I'm gonna dip my onion rings in the egg wash, let it drip, and then drop them into the flour mixture and coat them, and then drop them into the hot oil. I'm using peanut oil because it has a very little flavor and it has a good high smoke point. You can heat it up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 230 degrees Celsius before it starts to burn. I'm actually heating my oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 177 degrees Celsius. You can use corn oil. It has the same smoke point as peanut oil, but corn oil is gonna have more flavor to it. I'm checking my oil temperature here. I want this to come up, as I said, to 350 degrees. 
That's looking pretty close. 347, 348, 349, 350. That's good enough. That's where I want it. Now I'm going to start dropping in my onion rings. And you want to cook these until they're golden. Meanwhile, I've got a tray on the side that I've lined with paper towels. And along the way, you can flip them over one time. I'm just finishing up the last of my frying here. You can see how nicely browned they are. I put them on a tray, as I mentioned, lined with paper towels. And then I sprinkled them lightly with kosher salt. So there they are, my onion rings. They look delicious. I can't wait to see how good they're going to taste. Took a little bowl of onion rings from myself. See how these taste. Wow. That is a very, very nice flavor. You can taste the onion. Everything about that is good. They're just salty enough. I don't like things too salty. These are really good, so excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my afternoon snack of onion rings. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.